most subject matters don't always have conclusive findings and in some cases conclusive findings of morality and politics. Different people have a variety of different views when it comes to many significant matters and especially with Queen Elizabeth. Now at first while I was organizing my show notes and trying to um, contemplate uh, about what to say in regards to Elizabeth's death, I thought to myself, maybe it's best to not force it in as a segment on the show because my mind was blank. And when you're running a weekly show now, you have no time to just wait for something to hit you creatively versus matter of urgency. Because the passing of Queen Elizabeth II goes beyond movies. It's a political, somewhat grim, and historical topic more than anything. And it's hard to find the relevance pertaining to movies about the subject at first glance. So I just let it go until another thought came to mind. What if we were to take a second glance at the subject matter? How has Queen Elizabeth been portrayed in film, and how did she herself perceive movies? Movies are an art form which existed since the 19th century. Queen Elizabeth has been alive for a segment of 96 years amidst the existence of movies. Someone who was born when the first movie was released is old enough to be her grandparent. Be it as it may, the Queen may appear to be old. But she isn't really. Movies happened a century before her. Let that sink in. The sentiment that the Queen was never exposed to a single movie is what I believe to be a misguided assertion in and of itself. And that's why I want to talk about it. Even though we've never heard directly from Queen Elizabeth what her favorite movie was, We've heard of it from a quote quote royal source, someone who's getting first hand information from the royal family and who would once in a while drop us a nugget of how the Queen Elizabeth sees her entertainment. Before I talk about this fervor, here's something you should be aware of about the subject matter of Queen Elizabeth. What we all must know. Whether or not we like her, don't care about her, hate her, not a big fan of her, neutral, whatever. That's besides the point. The core thing that unites us in the cinema industry is, well you guessed it, movies. You and I might not have a stake in the same views about Queen Elizabeth, but perhaps we can endorse that the Star Wars sequels suck. Likewise, and regardless of what your perceptions are about the Queen of England. We might both agree that the Star Wars sequels are just awesome. That's just an example of how movies unite us as a fandom. That being said, the passing of Queen Elizabeth II is very influential and that in itself warrants the subject matter as a segment here on the Cinema Courtroom Show where we cover everything movie and pop culture related, including what influences it. Queen Elizabeth's death, for sure, might have just caused a ruckus in the tides of movie marketing. The second trailer for Black Adam was distributed on social media a day after Queen Elizabeth had died. And the reason why not many people converse about Black Adam is because it is overshadowed by the news of Queen Elizabeth's passing. Just to give you a bit of context and insight, Queen Elizabeth II passed away last Thursday, September 8th. As I am recording this podcast, this is literally being recorded a day after she had died and it's still trending on the news and everything. I might be stating the obvious here, but this is something short of a historical week. Nothing short of a historical week. The Queen 
has actually died. 96 years she lasted, and that has come to what plenty of British people acknowledge as a bittersweet end. Queen Elizabeth is no stranger to the film industry in general. Again, that's my opinion here. Netflix's original series on their platform, The Crown, is literally a dramatized biopicture of Queen Elizabeth. I shouldn't be saying this because I don't typically cover television news, but the new season for The Crown has halted screening out of respect for Queen Elizabeth II. The King's speech, which was released in 2010, is about King George consolidating his worth to lead Britain through the Second World War. That's obviously related to Queen Elizabeth, because it's her father. In other movies and TV shows, Queen Elizabeth is portrayed to align with how the public is supposed to perceive her. Elegant, formal, apolitical, civil, mostly quiet. Sometimes she is portrayed with a bit of comedy and cheekiness, but she always, always gets the last word. And then there are people who think that adds to the comedy aspects of her scene as well. We don't know what the Queen watches in her spare time, definitely. But we do know, or might know, in case, you know, one of the sources could be making this up, what her favorite movie is. It's apparently Flash Gordon, a cult classic space opera, which was released in theaters in 1980. The funny thing is that some of the original soundtrack was composed by the band Queen itself. That's interesting. So anyway, I mean, the more I begin to ponder about the death of the Queen and about the subject of movies, I think that I can conclude without a shred of doubt that Queen Elizabeth is more connected to the film industry in terms of her portrayal and what her favorite movie is than many of us might think. And even her death is connected to the cinema industry because the news of her death distracted a film's potential eyeballs and the people pre-booking tickets from their marketing and trailers. Instead of clicking on marketing for new movies and new trailers, people spent more than a day absorbing the significant news. Not to mention that movie productions in the UK might very well be halted, and anyone who's employed in the film industry won't be working for a certain time quota until the days of mourning passes. And, as we should know, rescheduling another week of shooting requires intense capital added costs, so we can see a impact on the economy there. Now, if, despite hearing all of these points, you still don't think that her death affects the film industry, or you don't think the Queen is a movie person at all, let me know why you think that in the comment section below or send a message to the cinema courtroom inbox on twitter at the cinema courtroom or on instagram at cinema court blog links are provided in description another thing and i didn't want to mention it in the opening of this segment of today's show but i think it's opportune for me to say it here I will be removing any comments that aren't apolitical or neutral to the passing of Queen Elizabeth. My forums are strictly resolved around movies, not world politics, or if the Queen is a bad person or not. You didn't hear any discourse on the show about whether the Queen is X or Y. In that same respect, all I ask in return is that it shouldn't be seen in my comment section. If you already know that, then good. Other than that, reminder, I would be very intrigued to read your thoughts about the passing of Queen Elizabeth II 
and its extent of correlation to the cinema industry.